Hello investors. My name is Ujwal and I am the founder of Wealth Culture. Here we are trying to build a culture of investing by helping retail investors in their long-term investing journey. So let's get started. request you to watch this video till the end so that you can identify such situations going forward and stay away from such companies to start with let me first explain what is value investing and what are value traps value investing is the process of finding underpriced stocks buying them and holding for the long term until the market realizes the value of the company and the stock starts picking up benjamin graham warren buffett and charlie munger are some of the most famous value investors that we know of while value investing may sound easy it is tricky because we can land into value traps and not know about this for a very long time so what are value traps value traps are investments that are trading at very low valuation and present themselves as buying opportunities for investors but essentially this is misleading these bargains so to say may appear promising but they prove to be big letdowns for investors as they don't perform and in some situation it also leads to permanent loss of capital there are two quick examples i can think of one is yes bank and the other is itc in yes bank investors had permanent loss of capital while in itc even though the investors didn't lose capital but the company went on to give suboptimal returns for 7 years in a row Let me know in the comments below whether you think ITC is a value trap or a value investing opportunity going forward. Now let's move ahead. Investing as you know is all about buying low and selling high, right? So as value investors, what do we typically seek in a company? We want low price to earnings, we want high dividend yield, we want low price to book and we also want a high margin of safety. These are the four parameters that can make an investing opportunity very interesting. So let's do one thing. Let's run a screener where we are trying to find companies with price to earnings of less than fifty and price to book of less than two. As soon as I run the screener, I can see more than seven hundred companies pop up on my screen. Now, more than ninety percent of these companies, as you see, are basically value traps. Over the next ten minutes, I am going to explain why and how you can identify such companies and stay away from them. Let me start by saying. that these companies have low valuation for a genuine reason the market is almost never wrong most of these companies will not do well going forward and some of them will even become bankrupt our biggest risk here is that we may get into this these companies assuming that they are value investing opportunities while these companies erode wealth over the long term and we keep holding such stocks so how do we identify value traps and stay away from them i am listing down six reasons based on my investing experience that will help you identify such value traps the first reason is little or no revenue growth and in some cases a degrowth in revenue as well so these are businesses delivering low revenue growth over longer periods of time the second is inefficient capital allocation by the management wherein cash from good business lines are being pumped into low roc low profit businesses and the second could be that the business has very high leverage for a longer period of time so the company is not in intending to reduce its leverage the third is reduction in profitability and this is a possible situation wherein the company operates in a very difficult industry where there is too much competition and hence because of that there is price erosion so the company is continuing to generate lower and lower margins going forward the fourth and the most important red flag is promoter issues and this could vary anywhere from reducing stake in the company to having related party transactions lot of in institutional investors try to avoid companies with promoter issues the fifth important point which has started to become a major issue is the esg rating of the company companies which are compliant with environmental social and governance factors and continue to improve on these risks get high esg rating and these companies also seem to get more attention from the institutional investors both dii's and fi's as well the sixth point is the most important factor 
विच इज रिलेटिंग टू अ ट्रिगर और अ फ्यूचर कैटलिस्ट दैट कुड चेंज ऑल ऑफ दीज फाइव एस्पेक्ट एबसेंस ऑफ एनी ट्रिगर और अ फ्यूचर कैटलिस्ट basically means that the company is in a limbo and so these are the six major reasons why a company could be in a value trap and we will look at examples relating to all of these six issues and see where these are applicable in real life and i want to discuss three case scenarios one scenario is where people have lost money in a value trap so and we'll try and understand why these companies are value traps the second scenario we will look at examples that were value traps but came out because of some triggers and the third scenario we will look at some examples which were value traps and here there might be some triggers which have started to show up and these could be potential opportunities to make money going forward now these are not buy buy uh, suggestions please invest by doing your own research these are just thoughts that i want to share with you more as a learning experience let us look at bajaj consumer now here we will cover three companies that are basically value traps and we are not seeing any triggers going forward so we don't hope these companies to change from value traps to value investing opportunities going forward as of today now what are the problems with bajaj consumer bajaj consumer has three problems out of the six that we discussed one is that the margins have been falling for the company the second is promoter holding has reduced significantly third is that there are no triggers whatsoever going forward as well for the valuation to go up the second situation is vst industries now vst industries is another tobacco company here again the biggest factor for this company not generating any significant returns over the last 2 3 years is the esd angle so we obviously as you can see lot of foreign institutional investors have exited the company in march 2019 their share was 8.87 and now it has come down to less than 2% in december 2021 so as you can see fii's are not interested in companies which are basically sin companies the second reason is that the company has delivered a low growth rate and that is also because of hike in taxation by the government so that remains a key risk in this business because the government tends to increase its tax rates every now and then thus hurting the revenue growth rate of the company the third factor again is no trigger for any of these factors to change let us look at companies that were earlier value traps but came out of the trap because of some triggers amrutanjan healthcare is one such company amrutanjan is a very old company and as you can see from the chart here the stock was not going anywhere for a very long time at the turn of 2010 fourth generation scion mr pu prasad took over the remains of the company and started launching new product he even rebranded the flagship amrutanjan brand in order to woo the youth out of the new product that the company launched the comfy range of women hygiene products started to grow significantly and garner market share from 2015 to 2021 comfy sales grew at 91% cagr and the opportunity is still immense going forward as you can see the company has delivered a decent 10 year and a 5 year sales growth while the profit growth has been even higher this has led to the stock becoming a multi bagger over the last 5 to 6 years so basically change in management was the biggest trigger followed by launch of new products and those new products contributing to sales and profit growth going forward the next case i want to talk about is the sugar industry where the whole industry is starting to transform due to the government's ethanol blending program which is the trigger in this case almost all sugar stocks have got re-rated and are now trading at much higher valuation in comparison to their history the ethanol blending program has in a way changed the nature of the industry and made it less cyclical because demand for ethanol is secular and will only continue to grow growing forward with the increase in blending target so that's an example of a trigger which changed the entire industry now let's look at two case studies which are value traps but there could be some trigger in the future that can change the future of the company going forward i want to start with indian terrain let me first talk about the reasons why indian terrain seems interesting and what are the concerns as to for it to be a value trap so let's look at what is interesting first it's an excellent brand indian terrain as we all know is a premium shirting brand which has quite a good reputation in the market the second is that the management is good and comes from a reputed background 
and the third good factor about this company is that it is available at a very cheap valuation at this point of time which is, which is classic of any value trap opportunity now let us look at the reasons as to why this company is trading so cheap the debt levels in the company are at all time high all of the interest payment is basically eating away their profits they have huge trade receivables and over the last 2 years FIIs and DIIs both institutional investors have exited the company in large amount so the very low, very small percentage share held by FIIs and DIIs now now what could be the triggers going forward one of the biggest triggers is the post covid recovery over the last two quarters if you look at the revenues of the company have started to inch upwards and in q3 fy22 the company actually posted a 100 plus 100 cr plus revenue so the revenues are getting back on track there are early signs of debt reduction which in my view is very important for this company to get into profitability right if you look at the q3 numbers the company has still posted a profit even after making a large interest payment the third point is relating to the company's overall growth projection so as per their annual report they want to increase the number of exclusive brand outlets to about 400 from the current 220 230 odd number right so that's an aspiration to grow the business even when the company is going through a financial struggle so all of this could be trigger points going forward now how do we go about investing in this company so it's very important let's say that it's a value trap and it can become a value investing opportunity going forward but how do we approach to invest in this company it is very important that we track the quarter on quarter performance of the company and should exit at the first sign of problem there should be very low tolerance for underperformance if the company is not able to keep its quarterly revenue rate of 100 plus crores that's a huge problem if the company is not able to deliver on its profitability uh, as in it's not able to maintain a 10% plus operating margin that's a problem the third is the reduction in borrowing borrowing so the company has to consistently able to reduce its borrowings even if it is doing slowly there should be some reduction in borrowing any sign of borrowing going up is a huge negative and that's a sign to exit the company asap the fourth is the receivables itself so it's related to the working capital cycle that should also start to come down as we see quarter on quarter performance going forward so these are the four or five metrics that i would track very actively quarter on quarter for this company now let's look at the second case study which is parag milk foods parag is an excellent brand they are leaders in some product categories for example go cheese and they continue to launch new products value added products in the market and value added products contributes majority of the revenue today it is available at less than 10 p going forward now what are the concerns why is the company trading so low one is that the company has very high inventory and that has been a problem with the company for a very long period of time so they have not been able to manage their working capital and that continues to be a issue for the company The second is bad debt over the last four to five years. That's a significant amount. And the third is promoter sharing holding has come down significantly. So these are the three major problems of why the company continues to be a laggard. Now, what could be the triggers going forward? One is the post-COVID recovery. So as we know, during the COVID period, the milk reduced, milk consumption reduced uh, significantly, and that demand is expected to come back post the COVID period is over. the second trigger point is that eight roads and ifc these are the two investors who have recently invested in the company so that's a huge huge trigger point for me because uh, when some of these investors they join they uh, they make sure that their strategy is aligned that the company is working on the right uh, matrices and improving those matrices going forward so i believe with the coming of these two partners there will be significant improvement in the company especially on some metrics which have not really worked for them before how would i again go about investing in this company is that i would track metrics of this company quarter on quarter and very low tolerance for underperformance so as soon as i don't see things improving for uh, for two quarters at max then i will take exit from this company and how do you identify uh, what are the metrics to track basically i would want the revenue to go upwards of 600 
over the next two quarters, which is basically the pre-COVID run rate. So that's the first expectation. The second expectation is for the margins to remain 7% up. The third is I want the PAT to inch towards 30 crores per quarter. That is the number, which is basically the pre-pandemic number. And I want this number to be achieved by the company as soon as possible for me to regain my faith in the company. And the third is reduction in interest cost. The idea of telling you what are the concerns, what are the triggers and what to watch out in, in value investing is because value investing is not a, an approach where you invest in a company in a single go and then watch the show. A value investing is a very active approach to investing where you are tracking the company dynamically over a period of time to make sure that your investment thesis is panning out the way you've thought it to be. And only time can tell that. So you have to run with the time and see that the company is delivering on its promises quarter on quarter. Now let's discuss how to invest in such ideas so that we maximize our gains and minimize our losses. So let me just quickly cover major points that you should follow when you are doing value invest. The first is always practice investing in tranches where you are increasing your share in the company with every passing good quarter. It has to be on a quarter on quarter basis. So for example, if I invest in Indian terrain and the next quarter is as per my expectation, then I invest a slightly less, then I invest more. So I invest when the share price is going up and not when it is going down. In a value investing approach, the smart way is to invest when the stock is going up, when the company is continuing to perform good quarter on quarter, is it is then that you have to average upwards and not downwards. If the results don't pan out as expected, exit the company as soon as possible. Because most likely the company will not recover from that situation and it is going to be a value trap for you uh, for the times to come as well. So the triggers really have to play out. If the company is launching a new product, but that product is not going anywhere, you have to exit the company. If it starts to play out the way you've thought, then you increase your position in the stock. That is the way to make your winners big and make your losers small. Thank you investors for your time today. I hope you learned something out of this video. I am planning to make more such videos in the future. So do like and subscribe to get updated on future videos. Thanks and have a good day.